Welcome to the webinar IVD Ready by May 2024 with Platomics. My name is Simone Latkolik and I work in business development at Platomics. My background is in molecular biology, and after spending some time in research, I worked in quality management in the industry for several years. At Patomics, my focus is on the requirements of the IVDR, the in vitro diagnostic regulation for laboratory, laboratories and healthcare. We are a company based in Vienna, and our mission is to digitalize and automate regulatory processes for all stakeholders in the field of in vitro diagnostics. Our mission is to bring safe and effective innovations to the market quickly and efficiently for in vitro diagnostic manufacturers and laboratories. The in vitro diagnostic regulation, the IVDR, applies to all EU member states and was first published in 2020, uh, 2017, with a five-year transition period. It was rolled out on May 26 in 2022. The next set of requirements, which pose significant challenges for laboratories, will become effective in May 2024. But more about that will be covered by our guest speakers. As guest, uh, we had invited for the German webinar Dr. Sonja Neuhofen. Her talk and her presentation will be available soon on our webpage uh, with uh, the um, subtitled uh, webinar in English. Um, also, we, ha we have invited uh, Andreas Oberleitner. He is head of uh, quality management and regulatory uh, affairs at Patomics. So um, Dr. Sonja Neuhofen, uh, she talked about how the IVDR affects uh, uh, medical laboratories. Her talk, as I said, will be available in the English subtitled webinar on our web page soon. Um, then, so now I will give an, uh, IVD, an, uh, an overview of the IVD Ready program and uh, the timeline. And after this, Andreas Oberleitner will present um, the Platomics platform and will give a demonstration to um, the IVD assistant. So the IVD Ready program and the timeline. Platomics has launched the IVD Ready program to support laboratories and health institutions in achieving the IVDR compliance for in-house uh, developed uh, tests. The program lasts for uh, one year, starting uh, on May 26 uh, this year in 2023, and gradually guides participants through the IVDR uh, requirements. The program will end uh, on the deadline of May 26 in 2024, when the next set of requirements will be applicable for the in-house in vitro diagnostics including the need to provide complete technical documentation, to implement a quality management system, and to conduct clinical use surveillance. Over the course of this year, we will uh, accompany laboratories by offering webinars, workshops, and additional information on various thematic topics. Each month, a webinar focusing on a specific team will be held, as shown on this slide. We approach the IVDR requirements step-by-step step to ensure a comprehensive understanding with the aim to achieve IVDR compliance by the end of this program. We guarantee that participants uh, and uh, so the laboratories and health institutions achieve IVDR compliance for their in-house test by the end of this program. We will start in early July with a how, uh, with a how to approach and uh, define strategies for documenting uh, in-house developed tests in a webinar titled Let's Talk Strategy. On July 25, we will have a webinar on the theme of in the intended purpose. The intended purpose is a crucial point in documentation. In August, we will provide a closer look at our regulatory knowledge database and guidelines to better understand the IVDR requirements. The dates for the first three sessions are already uh, set for July 6, July 25, and August 29. Invitations will be sent via email from Platomics. 
In September and October, we will focus on workflows and how to create and document the components within our platform. We will invite manufacturers and open the gates on our platform. Manufacturers can register their products release relevant uh, regulatory documents and laboratories can incorporate and integrate these documents in their workflows. In November, the team will be standard and uh, state of the art norms. In January, we will address topics such as risk management and the assessment of the benefit, benefit risk ratio for risk acts of in-house uh, uh, in vitro diagnostics. Platomics will be uh, will also release at this time point a wizard, uh, so a small helper program within our IBD software tool uh, to um, the corresponding and the corresponding templates um, as an aid. In February, March and April in 2024, so by next year, the focus will be on validation, instruction for use, labeling and clinical use civilians after the in-house IVD is operational. The IVD Ready program and the use of the IVD assistant for creating the IVDR compliant documentation for in-house uh, tests are both free of charge uh, for health institutions and laboratories including diagnostic labs, of course. IVD assistant will remain free of charge for labs, uh, particularly for the purpose of documenting in-house tests. Registering for the IVD assistant is essential to actively participate in the program. And uh, with this, I will hand over to Andreas Oberleitner. He will present uh, the PlatoX platform and give a de demonstration of the IVD assistant. Thank you very much, Simone, for the introduction. After we have now learned about the IVD Ready program, I would like to demonstrate a little bit or some parts out of our um, IVD Assistant, which is our uh, software platform product, uh, which represents more or less the backbone of the whole IVD Ready program. For that purpose, um, first, I would like to present uh, some slides to, to give a short introduction on the product itself. Afterwards, we can directly uh, switch over to the actual prototype uh, of our product itself. And I would like to demonstrate uh, one or two small use cases within it. And after that, I would give uh, um, another slide uh, demonstrating the outlook to see, okay, where is the journey going to? Okay, so for that purpose, I would like to start my presentation and then also um, share my screen. Plato X IVD Assistant, what is it? Uh, Plato X IVD Assistant is our platform we're working on since uh, several years in the meantime. And this tool uh, will definitely become the one-stop shop for the entire regulatory process. So our goal is really to integrate everything that is necessary to accompany your uh, regulatory processes within the laboratory. Uh, and of course, by far the biggest point we want to cover right now is to create the IVD R compliant documentation on in-house devices. Furthermore, um, the tool helps you in creation of this compliant uh, IVD documentation. Um, the whole system is based on a big variety of templates and also component information provided by the manufacturers regarding their components. I will spend a few words on that a little bit later. Uh, the tool itself also integrates a so-called workflow studio. With this product uh, or sub-product, you can create and specify your lab workflows, which means that you can assemble literally the steps and also the components within those steps within the tool to um, assign subcomponents from manufacturers to those steps and therefore get the regulatory information directly processed into your technical documentation. Furthermore, we provide a, a whole regulatory knowledge base. Um, we are dealing with standards. We are providing examples within the tool itself. And as I already said, we provide a lot of templates um, to enable you to create your technical documentation. Furthermore, it is not only about the framework itself, so not only the templates themselves, but we also come up with a, a lot of so-called wizards. Those are small programs. Uh, small tools for automatically generating or helping you in generation of content. Content itself means 
for example, regulatory texts, justifications, or dealing with uh, some rules um, which are known from the IVDR. The whole uh, IVD assistant is a software as a service. So it is not required for you to install something on your local machines. You can simply enter the product by uh, entering a browser and logging in into the system. Of course, the whole system uh, fulfills the highest uh, cybersecurity standards. Our system is a uh, placed on an ISO 27001 certified European data center. And we are following the relevant standards uh, regarding cybersecurity, for example, performing regular, regular pen testing. The system itself is right now available in English and in German, but additional languages are planned according to the needs. And best of all, the tool itself is free of charge for laboratories and also health institutions. So what do we want to cover? Um, just imagine this is the main uh, workflow in general. First, we have that mentioned tool called Workflow Studio. Within this tool, you can generate or create your workflows and assign components to the relevant steps. And with that step, you will get also the information that is uh, connected and related to those components. In the next step, you typically have to define your intended purpose. This sometimes can already be a big challenge uh, because uh, the IVDR clearly states uh, what they want to see within the intended purpose, what, what needs to be defined. And the intended purpose really needs to be defined on a very high level or high grade detail. Um, based on this, the, the um, in-house product itself needs uh, to be demonstrated to fulfill the relevant or applicable general safety and performance requirements abbreviated here as GSBRs. And uh, last but not least, uh, the whole system needs to cover uh, risk management and also the aspects of performance evaluation have to be um, accounted into the whole system, which means that our product will guide you through the whole process along the whole IVD ready program. And we will provide you with uh, tools for each and every of these steps within the, uh, within the um, application itself. So how would it work? So just imagine we have our platform here. On the one hand, we have our product database. This database uh, will be opened by end of September and it will already contain uh, hundreds of products which you typically use uh, in your daily basis uh, within your workflows. And by selecting these products, you can easily uh, also transfer the relevant information provided by the manufacturer into your technical documentation. We also provide uh, a lot of templates, so templates for the different topics uh, along this uh, regulatory roadmap, for example, the relevant templates to create your intended purpose. It supports you with a regulatory knowledge base. So um, context-based, you will find a lot of information in each and every step you have to perform. You can also um, call on uh, different uh, information options, which means that you can uh, get additional information, further examples, and everything that helps you in interpreting and understanding the relevant IVDR requirements. And last but not least, we will also set up a whole standards database because uh, standards typically are a very good tool to uh, fulfill the general safety and performance requirements. On the one hand, we know that there are some uh, process standards, but there might also be some product uh, relevant standards. And um, to inform you about those standards or let you know about the existence of those standards and the content, um, we will also provide you with tools within the platform. This information will then be uh, processed within the workflow studio to set up your uh, whole workflow. And with those wizards I mentioned before, um, this little tool will help you in creating the content within the templates. So depending on your workflow or your in-house device itself. And last but not least, the tool of course uh, contains a fully fledged document editor, which you can use to create your documents directly uh, within the tool as of what you see is what you get editor. 
And with that, uh, it uh, is uh, rather easy or straightforward to create your in-house IVD technical documentation according to the in vitro diag diagnostic regulation. Just to give you a little bit more information how this connection between the manufacturer or laboratories would look like. Um, as we already mentioned, there is this uh, milestone called open the gates. And at this time point, by end of September, we will for the first time connect the manufacturers with the laboratories directly digitally on our platform. So the manufacturers will place their products and register them on our platform, independent of their regulatory uh, clearance grades. So, so IVDRs, but potentially also other components uh, you will find on our platform. This registration entails not only the product itself, but it also um, contains uh, the whole technically relevant or regulatory relevant information affixed, affixed to this um, components itself. So whenever you decide to choose one of those components and establish them within your workflow, you can do that by using the workflow studio via drag and drop. And um, what happens in the background is that the relevant information provided by the manufacturers on those components would be processed immediately and automatically in the background by the system and be placed into your future IHIVD documentation on your in-house tests. So um, for now, I would like to switch over to the real product, to the presentation. So I will stop again my presentation right now. And uh, we are now directly in the system. So what you can see here is just a simple browser window. I'm already logged in as a laboratory. And so what you can see here, um, this is just a demo environment. So please do not um, take care too much about the titles of these products or devices here. This is a long list of the devices which have been created already. The device in that case is exactly the thing that you would like to assess or to document. So in our case, it would be, for example, an in-house IVD device, which is represented by a workflow. You can create new devices very easy by clicking on one button. And as you can see, it's, the system itself would guide you directly to um, ser several questions regarding your workflow, starting with the very general information. For the sake of time, I would uh, rather prefer to go back and select an already existing device here. For example, the real-time PCR workflow as an example here. As you can see, this has been pre-filled already um, by us, this demo project. What you typically have to um, provide here is the device and workflow name. Then you have to define which type of uh, device you have. In our case, it is a workflow, which represents a combination of different types of devices, including instruments, kits, reagents, etc. And we also need to provide additional information, for example, the device and workflow version number. Even for internal purposes, you need to version your workflows because it's uh, necessary to distinguish between different releases of your workflow. Yeah, furthermore, we told the system that we would like to um, make an in-house IVD here at the moment, and then we need to add some additional text. First of all, the intended purpose that has been mentioned already, which is a crucial point or a very, uh, very crucial information, and that needs to get uh, further uh, attention, of course. Um, for now, this is just a simple free text field. And in the webinars, you will learn uh, on 25th of July that we will also provide you with a nice wizard helping you in more or less automatically creating exactly this definition of the internal purpose, fully compliant uh, with the requirements of the in vitro diagnostics regulation. Yeah, last but not least, also adding a contact person who is responsible for this workflow. In the next step, I would like to define this workflow right now. The Workflow Studio is a very easy and straightforward way to define your workflow. So let me just simply switch to English right now. What you can do here is to add a new workflow step, very easy. Um, 
by pressing the button. You define a name and can also define a short description on this workflow. In our case, we have already defined several steps and it's by the way also possible to add sub steps in a first level if that is needed. Um, in our example here, we have a specimen collection defined. Um, and I will now, for the sake of demonstration, remove this uh, collection kit here. Uh, and now I will demonstrate how you can easily add components. So by pressing Add Components, the relevant, relevant function, you see a full list of uh, different devices. Those are exactly the devices registered by our manufacturers. Of course, what you can see here is mainly a demonstrational products. I will now have a look if I can find the collection kit uh, by just entering a few um, letters uh, of, of a relevant keyword here. And as you can see, I can easily find uh, and retrieve the saliva DNA sample collection product here. I say, yes, I would like to add it to the component. And by pressing add the component, you can see it's now part of this step within the workflow. That looks very easy, but what happens in the background? In the background, all the relevant information on this saliva kit pre uh, provided by the manufacturer will now be automatically processed and be forwarded into your future in-house uh, IVD documentation. That means that you do not need to collect this information from somewhere, from the internet. You do not need to copy paste stuff. Uh, you do not need to find out where to place which information into which uh, portion into the um, into your own documents. No, it fully automatically pre-populates the information into the right positions. Then with the next step, we can start working on documents. I will just demonstrate a small use case regarding the um, hot topic of general safety and performance requirements. Instead of starting from an empty GSPR checklist, as most of you might know, yeah, an, an, an empty Excel or an empty Word document with a long, long table on GSPR requirements, we have switched uh, the mode of operation here. So what we are providing is that first we start by asking you around 25 to 30 questions. Those are all yes and no questions, as you can see, for example, if the product is used for a medical pro purpose or if the product is intended to be used by professionals only. Those are questions typically are rather straightforward to be answered by, by you. And um, after providing all of this information here, um, we can switch to the document shelf. And within the document shelf, now we can start creating different documents, different documents which are required to prove and demonstrate the conformity of your product. So first of all, creating a new document again is very easy by pressing the relevant button. You can see by selecting a document type that you can already pre-select a lot of different templates. Um, this is on our demo environment, so you can already see what you can expect in the future here. But um, for the demonstration, I would like to get back to a document which we already have um, pre-created, which is uh, the document on general and safety performance requirements, for example. By clicking on it, you see how it looks like. Um, what you see here um, is the opening of the document generator, which is a what you see is what you get editor directly built in within the system. So the document contains typical quality management related um, parts, as you can see, like the release information or metadata on the documentation, but also um, some information on the scope, uh, which is already pre-populated and also the product information. All of these things here, like the product name, for example, those are things that the system already knows from your entries from the, from the pre-assessing wizards. So this information is automatically populated. It is a, a variable in the background. And that means that, for example, the simple example of this product name here, you do not need to enter and copy all the time throughout of all your 20, 30 documents, which you maybe uh, want to create. No, the, the name of the product has been entered only once. And for the reason of consistency and also um, saving a lot of work, 
uh, the system already populates those variables into the right places within the documents. Getting further into the into the um, let's say the the real part of the general safety and performance requirements, you can see that it starts with uh, representing the requirement itself. Um, our system has divided those 20 main requirements, which you can find in Annex 1 of the IVDR throughout the three chapters, broken down into 188 sub-requirements because that's what it is. That's what it weights. Uh, it's 188 sub-requirements which you need to, to work on and to assess uh, step by step. And uh, by starting on that, you see, first of all, that we provide some context information. Those small, tiny info buttons here, they allow you to open a new window. And within those window, we provide a lot of additional information, a lot of examples. We try to explain things which you cannot directly find within the requirement itself. And hopefully this will also help you in understanding and interpreting the GSPR correctly. So far with the information, but the Really nice thing uh, is, of course, the automation. So um, you can see here there is a fill me block, so a block that has to be, be filled out by you because this block contains the relevant information which is typically expected to assess a, a certain requirement. First of all, you need to talk about applicability. But instead of going through all of the 188 sub requirements, you simply um, use our wizard, answer the 25 uh, set questions before within the wizard, and the system fully automatically uh, pre-fills the applicability status based on this information. So you can see here, the first one, for example, is already applicable based on the information you gave. The system knows already about that and has pre-filled that. But not only that, it also provides you with a nice uh, sample of a justification text. This is, of course, only a suggestion. You can also edit everything. So I can, uh, at any time, I can enter this information and add my own uh, things. So the document still is fully under your own control. You can add your own notes, your own parts within the whole document, but it is already pre-populated. The other three um, columns dealing with the methods applied, this uh, is often very often also connected to the relevant standards and guidelines, and also the link to so-called evidence, evidence documents also will appear shortly in, um, in our uh, releases throughout the tool. So regarding the evidence documents, um, if you have some external evidence documents, for example, if you have already an available risk management file somewhere within your QM system, you can very easily create a, a link to that document and uh, link it uh, permanently more or less to this document. The system itself, itself saves the document all the time automatically. This is maybe well known from systems like uh, Google or other cloud uh, services like Office 365. So you do not have to be scared of losing information because of not saving it. Um, and uh, the connection to your QM system at the moment is that you can easily export the, the document by clicking on a button. This uh, action would, um, would export your document within a PDF system, which you can easily then um, further use uh, according to your own quality management rules and manage your document and also release your documents. Yes, so this is the very sneak preview into some of the abilities of our future system. Um, I hope you liked it and I would like to switch back to the presentation right now because I would like to talk also about the outlook I already mentioned. So on the one hand, our tool um, should help you in creating the whole technical documentation uh, for re regulatory purposes. So on the one hand, uh, we are fully dealing with the requirements from the laboratories in creating their documentation. You have already seen some parts of the document editor, the workflow studio, some templates, and also some examples of wizards. We will also present the regulatory affairs uh, knowledge base. 
but uh, I would also like to draw your attention that uh, apart from the technical documentation, we will also take care on the quality management side. So what we will also develop in parallel is a um, fully fledged EQMS system uh, that should cover all the requirements from that perspective. And said with that, we will also um, come up with relevant templates for ISO 15189, because we would like to connect uh, the whole IVDR topic, of course, also with the relevant accreditation, which by the way, is also literally mentioned uh, within the Article 5.5 requirements. On the other hand, um, very similar, we will also um, continue on working with the manufacturers uh, to make the information um, enabled and, and available throughout the systems. And um, we are also planning to um, connect if needed to, to certain consultants, trainers, or even contract research organizations. From time to time, this could also be needed uh, within the regulatory process to um, facilitate the whole creation of different documentation. Okay, so that was it from my side. I'm happy to um, get your questions asked. Uh, and um, with that, I would like to hand over back to Simone. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas, for your presentation and the demonstration of the IVD assistant, as well as giving us an outlook of our digital platform. Uh, we have some important information for you to ensure that the products you need appear on our Plato X platform at the gate opening in fall. We ask you to let us know the names of the most important, important manufacturers for your lab. Um, a quick note about the AVD program and the AVD assistant from us. To fully participate in the program, access to the AVD assistant is essential. During the registration process, you may have already pre-registered for uh, the access to the IVD assistant. Uh, those who haven't uh, so uh, will receive their um, so those who have done so will receive their login details from us. If you haven't pre-registered for the IVD assistant, you can contact us via email uh, on our website. The next webinar will take place on July 6th at 2 p.m. with the title, Let's Talk Strategy. We will discuss possible strategies and approaches for documenting in-house developed tests, whether a laboratory has 50 or 250 diagnostic in-house tests. Once again, I want to express my sincere thanks to all the participants who have joined us uh, already to our program from around the EU. Uh, with this, I would like to thank you very much and I wish you a wonderful afternoon uh, on behalf of the Platomics team.